This is part two of my conversation with my guest and expert witness, Derek Evans, MBE, better known as Mr. Motivator, fitness instructor, keynote speaker, and TV personality. We talked together about principle nine, people follow people, not disembodied principles. I just rejoiced in our conversation because I've known Derek for 30 or 40 years. We work together in TV and I've just seen him put this principle into action. In fact, even this very morning, I did a workout with Derek where he's joined now by crowds of people who are still following him. Follow people, not disembodied principles. If anyone knows about how to do that, it's Derek. That's really what you do, Derek. I tell a story. I'll tell a story, and then you tell me how this happened. So, <laughs> so Derek, you know that, well, because we know each other, um, and you probably looked at me and thought, well, how unfit that bloke is. You, you <laughs> said, you said, why don't you join me? So I live in London, you live in Manchester, and you gave me this Zoom link, and you said, hey, let's do this kind of workout thing, and I'll try my hardest to get you a bit fit. That was a, When was that? Two and a half years ago, something like that. Two probably, years, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, we started doing this thing, and now because of your can point the wayness, your you know set the people freeness, uh, it's grown into this huge movement, hasn't it? I know. No, it has, and uh, you know it's amazing because initially to join that group, what you had to do was you had to join the WhatsApp group because I couldn't guarantee that every morning, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, I'd be able to do the class. But at least it gave me an opportunity to send you a message to say, listen, class isn't on tomorrow. So we opened it up to all these people who joined. And in fact, what for me is particularly interesting is that initially this was just a an announcement board. It was a notice board. It's grown now where people are on there discussing their problems. They're now sharing their good times and their bad times. And it got to the point where, in fact, I've actually had to mute it because it kept going off every minute because they'd be talking about the fact they've got an operation they're dealing with and the fact they've had to deal with the following difficult mental uh, situation. And I'm kind of amazed because if I'd set this up as a group for people to meet and talk, I don't believe it would have grown the way it's grown. But because it was set up just as a notice board, People have found this level, and I don't intend to change it. I'm leaving it. So now new people say, look, join the group if you want. It's only my announcement board, but you will meet people who have life lessons and things that they're going through. And so that's uh, it's an extraordinary thing to me. I tell people about it, you know, that mm. that you, you'd you said to me, hey, Steve, why don't we do, do this workout? And we used to do it on our own and, and talk. That's right. You know? And then you kind of added a few people, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And then so many people join that you set up the WhatsApp group. And now the mm. WhatsApp group, like you say, it's this mm. huge forum for yeah, people to talk to each other. And so so socially as well, well, yeah. that's part of the well-being thing, isn't it? But as yeah. well as physically, yes, socially, it's becoming this giant thing. So you are a movement person, aren't you? You are one of those people who points people to somewhere. People do follow you. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, look, I'm the messenger. And I believe that I believe in the message. And because I believe in the message, I don't go into any interview with notes and things written down that I'm going to say. I don't. I've done so many interviews, Steve. Every time they go, shall we send over the questions? I say, no, ask me anything you like. Because it's coming from in here. If it's coming from in the heart, I can talk about it forever. If you ask me what Pythagoras' theorem is and how it works, I mean, I can't tell you. But if you ask me anything to do with well-being, feeling good about yourself, picking yourself up, making a start, making a difference, looking after yourself so that that way your family and all your friends can benefit from the fact that you're independent, I can point you in the right direction. I can't give you motivation, but I believe I can create the environment that is going to motivate you, whether it's the music, the attitude, the laughter, the fun. The exercise that I do... There are loads of fitness instructors out there who do those exercises, but that's not what it's about. In fact, the exercises we do is almost secondary. Mayor Angelou said, and I've always adopted this, people may forget what you said. They may even forget what you did, but they'll never forget how you make them feel. 
And if all of us focus on making people feel good, the results come on everything you do. And that's what's kept me here for 30 years. And this principle applies in any walk of life, doesn't it? Yes. In any field, to yes, anybody does. who's who's got an idea, who's got a vision, yeah. it's about them as much as, yes. about, as it is about the idea. Absolutely right. And no matter what idea you have that's going through your head, number one, you've got to employ some principles. Be consistent with your message. Be regular with your message, right? Because otherwise people drop off. It's a bit like on social media, if you don't do something regular, People lose you in amongst all that's going on out there. So don't let your dreams get lost. Be consistent. Be regular, right? But most of all, have fun doing it. If you're not having fun doing it, you won't get up at 6 o'clock in the morning. I wake up every morning at 5.30, even though I may get to bed at 1 o'clock in the morning. I am still up, and I'm ready to go. Why? Because the mission I'm on, I'm enjoying every step of the way. And people go, why haven't you retired? Don't. You're crazy. Retirement is death. You don't retire. You keep going. That's what keeps yeah. you alive. And I'm doing yeah. something. Look, I do all this stuff for free. Why do I do it for free, Steve? It's because there's one thing you can't give away in life, and that's kindness. It comes back to you tenfold. And you've been the recipient of so much because of what you've given. You've been the recipient of so much. That is kindness paying you back. You don't do it for that reason, but it happens because you did some kindness. And that's what I believe we should all be doing, right, is influence people positively. Number two, make sure you always have a kindly word to say. Paint a picture of where they can go with their lives, whether it's health-wise, whether it's um, work-wise. I had a guy call me up just before I came on here. He said, thank you. I said, why? He said, well, you saw me. He was down and out. He was really having a rough time with his work. And I sat down with him, invited him around for dinner. We sat, we talked. He said, because you, because and those words are important, Steve. If someone goes, because of you, yeah, yeah, that is how well, powerful that is. Yeah, so this leads me into another question, something else I'd, I'd like to ask you about. Um, because we've known each other such a long time, I know this has also been a struggle for you, hasn't it? It's been a struggle mm. to get your voice heard and, and you know, your, your colour, the fact that you're black, yes not why i know it's been because i've known you so long a struggle at some at uh, various moments i was telling somebody at the other day uh, actually mm. about that there was that time a couple of years ago or perhaps, uh, i can't re- quite remember when when we went and did that big thing in the park in croydon and um, uh, oasis of course has uh, six body and soul yeah, six schools in the uh, that area, and yeah, we did we did a. I asked you to come and do an event for all the primary kids in our schools yeah. in the park in Croydon, where we're opening a youth centre. We're working yeah. towards that. Uh, uh, even still, we made great great yeah. progress. But the thing yeah. that impressed me most, actually, you you probably weren't as aware of it as I am, is I, I forget when it was starting. Say we were starting at half nine in the morning, all the kids were going to come. You know, there were about a thousand of them at least, weren't there, that turned up for this from different mm, schools. Yeah. But the thing that impressed me most is we arrived early when they were setting up the PA and for the amplification system. And then the residents knew that you were going to be there and this was going to happen. And I remember that the, the first person who came up and I was stood there with you and they came up to you and it was someone who was was black. And they said, oh, I just they wanted to get their selfie with you, uh, et cetera, et cetera, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. say hi to you. And then they said something along the lines of, do you know, I just want to say to you, Mr. Motivator. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they said, I remember you in the 90s. And you were the only black guy on TV and you gave me courage to be who I am because I could identify with you. And you may remember that there was a trickle of those people all morning long, wasn't there? This must happen to you a lot, of course. And then I remember the big thing was 
The guy in charge of the policing, because we had to have the police involved because there were so many people, yeah. you met them in the office yeah. in charge of the policing. Do you remember he turned up and he was black and he looked at you and he said, I just want to say thank you to you because when I was a kid, you were on the telly and you were the only black guy on telly and you inspired me and you let me know that I could be something too. I'll tell you Absolutely. what, Derek, I, was, I nearly cried. I thought it was so wonderful. But you've pointed people there, but you've struggled in it all, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. You know, because, Stevie, I mean, thank you for saying those things. But, you know, here's, here's the situation, Steve. I believe the fuel that keeps me going is when someone tells me no. And I had that for 10 years, the kind of telling me that a black man doing fitness on television would never work. But I believed that it would. And I wasn't trying to be uh, the same as. I just believed that I ought to be different and i felt that i had to market myself differently to everybody else and i there were so many stumbling blocks the advertisers do not want to advertise around a black man doing fitness on television there was all this thing going on and i thought that's crazy that's stupid it did not make sense and so my important the important thing for me was to show that there is no difference between me other than the fact that I wear some bright clothing and i put on some music and i have crazy attitude and i smile a lot and i laugh a lot that's that quite because, different, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was maintained. We're all the same, but slightly different. So there's a slight difference. Yeah, that's all it is. But I say to everybody who may be listening to this, the price of success is perseverance. You can't wait for your ship to come in. You've got to swim out to it. No one owes you anything. But in doing all that, work hard, be considerate, be kind, and then amazing things will happen in your life. I mean, listen, I'm the guy that ran around barefooted. I'm the one that was given away at three months of age. I'm the young man who now have been in the presence like you, Steve, of prime ministers and king and the queen and stuff like that. Who would have foreseen it? You don't know where your journey would take you. But if you've got a vision, like Moses, if you've got a vision, you really believe in it, right? Stand up tall and be an example of where you want people to go. And they will believe in you if it comes from your heart. Often people setting up with with a great vision for community, because my book is about for community builders, you know, it's for policymakers and leaders of churches and other faith groups and grassroots movements and small charities and people starting charities with a vision. Often, like just getting the fight, they have nothing. I remember when Oasis was, well, it was just me. And I, I used to think, will we make it? to next month's payday. Will I still be here in six weeks' time? Can I sustain this thing? And at the beginning, no one believes in you. That's the funny thing, do you know? Mm -hmm. Honestly, Mm -hmm. I was in that situation where I'd write to people about my vision and they'd never get back to me. No one would ever, and, and looking back on it now, do you know, I well, I didn't have any track record. And why should they listen in one, at one level? But they didn't. And it was so frustrating. It was soul destroying. But you've got this inner thing that calls you forward. Uh, mm-hmm. This struggle that you go through. So, yeah, comment on that a bit. Because you did have, a, but, you referred to it a little bit there, your childhood. <laughs> um, yeah. And coming to this country and all that. It was a struggle. Sure. But you know something, you don't realize what I learned from you Hmm. because you had a vision back in 1995, was it? Hmm. Get up and give. Oh, yeah, yeah. 94. 94. Okay. And we called it Motivation Weekend. Yes. And remember Motivation Weekend started with on St. Paul's Cathedral. I did a workout on the steps Hmm. on the back of a bike down to um, helicopter. Helicopter took me to Wales, took me to Ireland, took me to Scotland. And in every location, there were thousands of people come out. And we raised how much money that weekend, Steve? I can't oh, remember. We, yeah, oh, it's well over a million pounds. Yeah. Well, I think it was a million and a quarter raised that yeah. weekend. You had a vision, right? You didn't have the kind of public awareness of what you were doing then, but you still were able to paint that vision so people believed in it. And the success yeah. happened. I remember no. going to I remember going to see Peter McHugh, the boss of yes. GMTV, yeah, and yeah, and yeah. actually the the context of this is there'd been a a terrible earthquake in India, and I wanted mm. to build a hospital there, 
I am uh, dual heritage, you know, I, my dad was Indian and I knew about this terrible situation. So I went to see Peter McHugh and then I took you, I think, to see Peter McHugh as mm, well. That's right. Was, I came up with the great. idea of calling him Motivation. It was great. I came up with the idea of calling him Motivation Weekend. Yeah, he was great, but he was tough. And, and But he gave in and he did it. He did, he did. And we call it Motivation Weekend, right? And we invited people to have house parties, garden parties, all that kind of stuff. And it was an incredible event. Never been repeated, not to that level anyhow. Um, so what I'm getting at is that, you know, in life, right, we, we do things. Often because someone comes up with the idea, we believe in it, and we follow it through. I believed in me. I believed that I had something to offer. Right. And I still do. I'm still on this journey of learning. Every day I'm learning something new. Just when I think I've got something off pat, I drive travel to London like yesterday, have a meeting and I come away where someone goes, you know what? We love what you're doing. We can take it to another level. And I believe that my journey has only just begun because right now, initially started out as being very physical, what I was offering, but now it's far more well-rounded. It's well-being. And that's why it encompasses what you're talking about, because there are all these different elements that makes up all of us, makes up our well-being. It's physical, it's mental, it's emotional, it's financial. And if any one of those pillars, in particular your emotions, are in any way not stable, got a crack, got a flaw in it, it can affect every single thing else that you're doing. And so I've had to learn over the years to get my emotions in place, right? And I realized that with it in place and with it being stable, guess what? Everything else then flourishes and flowers. So whatever dream we have, wherever route we're going, whatever uh, path we're following, make sure emotionally you're supercharged into that idea. Otherwise, you will not be successful. So one last question, uh, really, is it, it's this, Derek. Moses, hmm. what was it? that allowed him to see the promised land when others couldn't see it? Or Michelangelo, what was it that allowed him to look at this block of marble that everybody else thought was useless and see David in it? What is it that allows a person that people are going to follow to see something that others haven't been able to see? Now, that's a real deep and heavy question. And I wonder if there's any one answer, because almost you could argue that Michelangelo is a different scenario to Moses, because Moses had this thing called faith, and he had a God that he believed in, right? Mm. And that God was the person who influenced him and gave him the vision and told him where he ought to go. So was mm. his journey easier than Michelangelo? Probably, because Michelangelo had to go, well, everyone else has failed. Was that the driving force? Was it because that everyone else has failed? Why he goes, there's got to be a way to solve this. There's got to be a way in which I can release what's inside of this. Is it? Is that what it is? Or is it the same? I don't know, Steve. Well, well I, suppose that, I suppose that inner faith thing, you know, for me, uh, it's been my mm. Christian faith. It genuinely, it yes. was that sense. Sure has inspired me all my life. But for other people, it might be something else. But it, it, I, I, one of those things, you know, people say, well, let's have hope in the future. I mean, I wasn't going to say yes, this, but yes. I have that it, it, thing of that, you know, be hopeful, be hopeful, be hopeful, we're told. And I mm. often think, well, how can you be hopeful unless you've got something to base that hope on? You know, whatever it is, you know, it seems to me hope is a shallow word it's got to be built on something, some kind of faith, some kind of core belief. Right. So what you just said there, let me just think. He who has health has hope. And he who has hope has everything. So it's built on something, isn't it? Mm. It's built on the fact that I've got health. That's one way of using hope. Maybe you could use hope many other ways. I'd have to think about that. But that is one way. You're absolutely right. It's got to be built on something for you to be able to take it forward. So he who has health has hope. He who has hope has everything. Thank you, Derek.